Hey everyone, Nerd Day Mark here, and this is a combo review episode. I was really busy last week, that's why there was little to no content up. Um, I had a lot going on, um, just personal stuff and work and just being burnt and tired. Um, and then the drastic weather change, uh, I, my allergies, like, dude, I had no real, like, energy to, like, record. I didn't turn my computer on, like almost all week um and also Diablo Horn Sparking Zero that's besides the point so I will be reviewing Kamen Rider Gavu episode 8 and 9 in this I'll start with 8 jump into 9 there might be a camera cut uh because I'm I'm not going to record these episodes uh these reviews back to back um or at least the same day but not like instantly after each other um but 8 episode oh also yeah I built my sodos finally so I'll be working on a video for that um episode eight i think as of right now episode eight probably is the most action we've gotten in one episode from a total time standpoint uh and i liked it uh i've complimented the show in the past previous seven episodes of how you know the fighting just wasn't fighting to have it there there was a story to it yeah it was quick but they were just the lore world building everything going on was just you know good in this one Picked up, obviously, episode 7 kind of left on a cliffhanger with Valen uh, fighting what Grota. And it started off with that again. And that fight was so damn good. Ugh. Like, I... The, the fight choreography, as well as just kind of showing... Not the power scaling, but just showing that, like, hey, you know, Valen is still new. This is his, what, second real fight. And, you know... Grota wasn't even in her granite form. So I was like, mm, something, the scythe, everything about that fight scene was just so damn good. And, um, obviously he got the beats. He got beat down. We're not going to have Valen being able to take out one of the main granite stomach ink, you know, family members. Um, speaking of, I do like with the family, there's more going on. You know, now that more have found out about the Red Gov, and even Grota's just like, no, it was a different one. There. And even the twins were like, there's another one. But because, and I brought it up before, I was like, they're keeping this a secret. Maybe there's dissension within the family, them not communicating everything. That was the case because they have been fired. And oh, I forgot, I'm learning names. I forgot his name, but one of the other older brothers, he basically fired them. And he said his agents are going to be handling their work now. And I'm like, I wonder what his agents look like. Because I'm wondering if all the agents are kind of the same, just maybe with some color swapping. Or if there actually are different forms to the agents. Um, that's the main thing I think would be like really cool. And I'm just looking to make sure my mic is actually recording because last week I recorded a video with the mic off. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I do like that we get more of uh, Sachika's backstory as little amount of time that was spent on it with her explaining. I feel like it did such a... It was just enough because, you know, she got you know thrown, paint thrown on her. And I do like that we find out, hey, you know, she's always, you know, tried to cheer people up, make people happy. And she always used to hear, oh, well, you don't understand. You know, like she couldn't relate to these people she was trying to help. So it kind of made her, you know, not, you know, basically she ran about ways because she was, pro quote, privileged, so to speak. And I think that it um, led to there being, you know, this, this, quirk in her and I'm I, I used to be the same way where it's just like all right I'll I'll just keep you know trying to cheer people up around me like don't you know everything's your fault like you know stuff like that and I thought that was really cool because like Sajika is such a like wholesome character and I feel like even she brought up she almost snapped on the painter when he threw paint on her this night she stopped and I'm like we may, and I feel like that's almost like a foreshadowing. We may see that moment where she is going to snap. And she kind of did in this episode because when uh, we are our, our Granu from previous episodes back, uh, Gavu did not defeat him. And, you know, there's a whole scene. Once again, I like how they're keeping 
Hanto and Shoma, like their identity is still a secret from each other. Even I do like when they go into like the little headspace where they're talking, like kind of narrating and like their thoughts. I like that's how that's still utilized uh, later on towards the end of the episode. There's a funny moment with that, but uh, you know, they both team up and they're fighting this Granu, and she does finally like be like, you know, grabs a paint can, throws it on the Granu. Uh, mind you, there's a lot that goes on that. Like I said, I'm not trying to recap the episode, honestly. I'm just trying to talk about, like, plot points, character stuff, things I enjoy of it. Um, I do like that she kind of was like, you know, I had enough. And she's like, no, like, it's not your fault. This is, it's monster's faults. And then she goes out there, dumps pain on him. Uh, we find out this monster is immortal because I was always wondering from the science side of things. You know, we have, uh, oh, I forgot his name already. The dude who is working with Hanto. Then we have Dente, who wasn't in this episode. But then we also have the Stomach Ink brother, who's also now doing experiments. And he did an experiment to basically make this Granu immortal. Which I was like, okay. Um. Also, there was a scene. And I'm still... It does not t- put take this theory out of my head of the Dr scientist dude who's working with Hanto that he's still going to be evil I still feel like he's going to be evil at some point but he was like hey they could take on human forms and he even talks about well they can probably take on human forms like we put on clothes and he's like how can we tell and they're like well the mouth stomach thing and so he lifts up the other guy's shirt and there's nothing there but I'm like just because there's nothing there you're you're not going to trick me he could still be evil he could still do something to himself down the road we are only eight episodes in um and that's really for a lot of the characters. The rest of the stuff was just fighting and action. I liked it. Something about Valen and then Gavu both using chocolate forms and just all the the two v one action. I there's a scene where they're back to back shooting all these like Granu his whatever his attack was or stuff flying all around. And I do like that Gavu at one point used the white chocolate Gochizo and gave the gun to Val and then made one for himself and they're both dual wielding shooting their back to back doing the spin attacks and all I thought about was like drag Ball super when they had Goku and Vegeta like back to back doing their attacks and stuff I was like I think that was from the Brawley movie and I was like that was really cool I, I the action sequences are so good and I do like that they still are showing like Valen is inexperienced as a in, in being a common writer uh, I do kind of like how we, almost like he's keeping track. He's like, all right, it's time for me to defeat my second Granu. And I'm like, yeah, keep track. Just like Gimli was keeping track of all the orcs he was killing to have a competition with Legolas. Like, that's, that's, okay, I'm done making other movie references. I am, I am, because my age is showing. Um, but yeah, the, all the action, everything else is cool. Um, I do like, like I mentioned, the inexperienced of Alan, because I was like, bro, is he just keep using his finishing attack? Like, he's just he just spamming up the energy bar just to keep using that attack over and over again, because it wasn't working. And we did get a cool side-by-side finisher from them on the Granu of the... Not even of the week, because I feel like it. this wasn't a throwaway monster, because it did set up the backstory that, hey, they are experimenting on the Granutes more to make them more powerful to combat the Red Gavu and now Valen. Uh, towards the end of the episode, I did mention there was, you know, the whole, when they're thinking their headspace view of where they both were trying to convince, uh, Sachika to stop thinking about common Riders or looking into that stuff. And when they both turned around and did their little thing, like they, they said it out loud cause she heard them and I was like, ah, intrusive thoughts coming out loud. I was like, all right, that's entertaining. And I was like, is that how they're going to slip up and accidentally, reveal to each other who they are um I, i'm curious but other than that this was a really good episode i really did like all the action i think we were due for a very action heavy episode um i'm like well it wasn't a bunch of world building and lore and character development like i said the parts with sajika and learning more about her personality when her backstory was good uh seeing just how not on the same page stomach ink is the, the the siblings are was also another nice little touch um other than that it's you know it was a good fun episode to kind of because you have to realize too seven and eight were like a two-parter so 
realistically, this video should be episode seven and eight reviewed together, but that's not how I did things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I'm looking forward to the next episode because one of the forms I was genuinely curious about is going to debut, and I'll be getting into that right after this part is done. So that's it for episode eight. Now it's time to jump in to episode nine. All right, so now I'm back to talk about episode nine of Kamen Gavu. Another two-parter, so episode 10 is going to continue, continue this one, but I do believe this weekend coming up, there are no new episodes because of a holiday, so I was like, I was really honestly, after I finished episode 9, I was like, man, do I do I go back and add it with episode 8 like I want to, or should I just re-edit the review for episode 8 and say, hey, episode 9 is going to be next week, but no, we're going to go through it. Um. This is the Halloween episode, so obviously candy. We get, oh, what is, uh, Garukin, I believe it is, the the um big mecha, meaty, beefy form, because, uh, you know, it's Halloween. Uh, we see him in uh, uh, Sachika handing out candy to kids. Then he's just like, Shoma goes trick-or-treating. Um, I do like... We got back to Hanto kind of investigating mysteries because uh, there's kids that are at a part of a dance uh, like school slash academy that are going missing. There's one that's missing. And now there's a rumor that there's a tunnel that has a monster in it. And every time they show the tunnel, I don't know if it's because if you've seen some of my older manga reviews when I had more free time to do videos, uh, I was really gassing up Don the Don when it first was coming out as a manga and even as an anime. And the other time, every time they show the tunnel, I was just like, man, Turbo Granny's in there. Watch out for Turbo Granny. But obviously there's a granny. Um, I do like the whole Hanto investigation. Like, that's something about Hanto's character that I was hoping would continue is like his investigative like journalism slash detective work uh, of mysteries, especially now that they revolve around monsters. I was like, this, this is what I like, you know? Um, something I hope... That was going to be more fleshed out in a previous uh, Kamen Rider series with a character that was obsessed with cryptids and stuff. But that didn't work like out how I felt like it could have. Um, the This episode, I, I do like that we did kind of get a follow-up to the twins. Uh, they got a second chance, so to speak. And they asked Nilov, 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 Nilov to uh, work on something for them, which we find out later on what it is. Um, I think it, this was just a fun episode and obviously a good way to debut a new form. We got our nice mecha lollipop hard candy form, which, oh, that form was so good looking. And I'll probably get into that a little bit. Actually, no, I'll talk about it now. I like how the, the, the four-wheeler turned into basically a Gatling gun. And then you see the Gojizos inside of it making the freaking ammunition. Everything about that was really cool, especially leading up to it. Because I was thinking, like, we we haven't seen Gavu really lose or, you know, get in this tight of a spot. Because we find out the items that the twins had made were um, two, basically, laser turrets little mini ones and they were able to melt the candy so when he's in his chocolate form that was melting the full malo form marshmallows were getting melted away say with popping gummy i thought it was really from a visual standpoint really cool and appealing to see like he's trying to use more gochizos to re up his armor but it's getting blown away and melted away faster and you know finding out the hard candy is something that won't melt easily and that's where that form comes in um, I also thought it was pretty neat. He had to call out for the Gochiza to show up. He's like, where are you? <laughs> I need you. And then, you know, so I thought that was really cool. Um, I think there's a lot of, there was, so there's some, uh, intergestion and bowel movement jokes in this, and it was done so good because while Hanto's investigating the dance studio stuff, he's following the he sees, sees a teacher suspiciously following a student and he approaches him and he wants to see his belly because the guy's holding his stomach weird. He's got some stomach issues. He's got a little bit of the bubble gut, a little gurgle, a little, little, little gas release. And I was like, oh, 
I'm all for fart and stomach jokes when they work. I always point out, and I hate bringing up other seasons, during Saber, when we had the revise like reveal in that show, like the fart jokes were just so bad. It, it was so off putting. And I was like, I hope the main show doesn't end up being like that. This was done in, in a, a funny fashion. Um, I did like the Granu this time around because we do find out he's basically has a bakery shop and that's how he's like finding people to turn into their deliciousnesses because. It, it, and one of the things is because of the shell and the snap, I was getting like, uh, is it hermit crabs? The one, those are the, I think I had one of those as a kid. That's the one that like goes out of its shell and then like goes into new ones. And because there's a scene at the end where the, you know, Hanto finally puts two and two together. He goes to where the shop was and it's gone. And I was just like, hmm. And, you know, he knows. And, you know, Hanto's like, where to go? And he sees a person who's like, oh, just disappeared. And he looks at the ground and he sees drag marks. And then he kind of puts two and two together that, hey, that's why, you know, it's, 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 it's gone. And I'm just like, okay, so maybe because it's like a, a hermit crab situation, maybe that's like a part of who he is. I don't know. I want to know more because that's really intriguing. And like I said, more mystery for Hanto to investigate because that's Hanto's little side story right now. Um, there were some cool moments. Hanto kind of one of the girls that he overheard about the the missing students this and that was also at the dance academy, and you know she was doubting herself this that. There's kind of like those heartwarming like l like mo like chill moments where he's like giving her advice and this and that. And I thought that was really cool. Um. I'm just, I'm still stuck up on the freaking whole Garukin form. Cause like, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to like make that suit, like 3d print it and everything. It would take forever. I don't know where I would be able to sand and paint any of it. Cause I don't have room, but I, I would, I would like to make that honestly. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, it was a good, it was a good episode. Uh, like I said, it's tough for me to get my full, because we do get a part two of it because it does end with the little girl that Hanto was talking to eating the little biscuit sweet like at the park and we see the Grand Newt sneaking up behind her and then it ends right as he's his mouth stomach thing is about to capture her so I was like ah that other two part episode like I'm torn because like I would like to, I want to review both these at the same time because there's a lot of stuff in this with no res resolution to it where that's where episode 10 is going to come in but hopefully I'll get to, I'll probably leave the review like right now for what I'm saying as is, and I will revisit what I'm saying in this one when I talk about episode 10, which will be basically just under two weeks from now. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, I really like these two episodes. I'm really excited and looking forward to episode 10. Um, I do like that we're nine episodes in and we only have what, um, five forms for Gavu. Um, I'm glad we're still not getting like tons of food. And the thing is like the forms right now, there's like meaning to their, like why they're appearing, you know, why they're debuting. It's not just, Hey, have a new form. Enjoy it. Like this one was very ingrained in the situation that was going on where he needed some, the hard candy. Cause that's not going to melt easily. I think that's really cool. And also we know from when he was eating the candy, he tried different hard candy ones. So there's three different goat cheesels that came out. So there are two more just chilling there. I don't know if they're going to be forms or if it's going to be like the the hot chips, which gave him just flaming swords and this and that. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with those. But that's it. That is my review of episode nine, as well as if you watched earlier review of episode eight. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of these episodes. What do you think of the Garukin form and that awesome attack? I thought that was really cool with the Gatling gun as a vehicle. But that's it for the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I got some other videos I got to record because it's my day off. So I'm going to get some candy toy stuff done and some other ones. Oh, so I thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.